Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'd like to talk about the snowfall totals across the northern hemisphere. It's the snowiest record in November as snowfall totals go for the entire northern hemisphere. We can extrapolate this out with the snowfall totals we've received since last year, this year, going forward into 2015, 16, 17, and 18. So let's take a look at the numbers and see what the thousands of square kilometer increases will be over the next few years. This is a data set from the Rutgers Snow Lab. I've just cut out 2012, 2013, and 2014 in October, not even November. So the main snowfalls have occurred this year so far in November. But let's take a look back into October. If we go forward from 2012, there was an 871 kilometer increase. Now jumping forward from 2013 to 2014, that was a 1,868 kilometer increase on top of the 5,000. Next year, we should be looking at around 7,200 kilometer increase for 2015. And we can bring that out again when we jump it up from 7,200. We're going to be pushing about 8,500 kilometers new in 2016. We'll be up to around 10,000 new square kilometers of snowfall. This is in October by 2017. We'll be pushing around 12,000 square kilometers around 2018 or so if you extrapolate this out and you keep going forward. I don't know if it's exponential or if it's going to be a linear type increase, but here are your numbers. You can do your own math, work out your own equations. And the reason I would think like this, let's take a look at the September 2014 snow totals. Quick jump over. This is the anomaly above baseline, which is 100%, wherever the blue is. And if we're looking at the monthly snow totals for September of 2014, take a look at how quickly that increases in October of 2014. I can guarantee you when we get up into November, that is going to be much greater. We've had some incredible snowfalls across the Northern Hemisphere in the last month that aren't put into the pixelated form here that we have. Everywhere you look, there's an increase. Arctic sea ice is right within that 2% deviation range of the 1981 to 2010 average. Cryosphere. I was told that with all this rising CO2, there would be absolutely no ice in the Arctic Circle. But look at this. This is nearly equivalent to the 2007 totals, if not even a little bit greater. I jump back into the snow lab. A different look at the snow cover. This is October. November. Look at the giant jump between November and October there. This comes from NOAA. If you look on the right, notice the fill-in in the Arctic Circle with the ice, the yellow area. Look how much less there is just a year later on the top of the Arctic Circle there. This is a look over Eurasia. Again, when we're pushing toward Europe on the left, there going west notice how much fill-in is between 2013 and 14 the northern hemisphere once we get the late November snow totals included into this that should definitely exponentially jump up and increase way far south from what you see on this chart here all 50 states were below freezing which is an unusual thing that included Hawaii as well as Florida you can backdate that and take a look. Now an interesting thing, these are the actual temperature departures through 2013 and 14, which is already last year. Easy to find the data set for that. This is the forecast this year. Notice it's in the same areas, the decreased temperatures. But here's a temperature reconstruction from the Maunder minimum. Notice how that matches pretty much equally there. And going forward, there should be a decrease in solar activity forecast by many, many persons in academia that do study solar cycles. This is our current sunspot number. We're right around 75 for the smooth mean, but that should decrease to around 50 next solar cycle. And once we get into the 50 range, we start going back into the Dalton 
as well as the monitor minimum type cooling events. Thanks for watching. Hope you can see kind of the the trend that is happening right now. The CO2 warmest have missed the ball on everything. None of the models have worked, but the persons who are calling decreased solar activity and going into a cool phase, they're right on the money. So they're calling cold. It's getting cold. CO2 warmest, the pause, how can you explain that? You can't. Solar minimum explains the pause.